Can we go back to just what steps you took either to meet Howard Barish, the producer, or how did yeah. you, what was your like initial pitch to him? Yeah, Howard Barish was an interesting um, milestone for me because prior to meeting Howard, I had developed scripts and written scripts, but I was always in the mindset, remember I'm learning about filmmaking, but in, I'm in the mindset, I'm gonna get into an independent, I'm trying to raise independent financing. Right, and for me that looks like my mother maybe giving ten thousand dollars if my mother had it, or a friend giving five thousand dollars, or just finding money like that. Or and I was led down the wrong path so many times, talking to people in Atlanta, talking to a casting director who knew somebody with money in Atlanta, and they get excited about the project and say, they, "Oh, they yeah, they, we want to get we want to get this thing going. We like it, blah blah blah." And you don't hear from them again, right? And that had happened so many times, like. I mean, the, main, the, the amount of people I had talked to that weren't really, I'm, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna use a qualifier here. They had never produced a film before. They never uh, given money to a film before. So that becomes, for, for any filmmaker going out there to making a movie, I mean, certainly you can work with people that have never done it before and they're gonna give money. But I think, a, 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 I just get, it's just a better fit if somebody's done it before. Like you take your film or script to a production company that makes it. You know, or you take it to another company that makes movies. Like you know, they have a history of that, right? Versus, um, okay, let me, you know, uh, let me take it to this person. Let's take it to this person. And I had done that for years. I don't know why, but I was doing that for years. And so, and I was always reaching dead ends. Okay, and this is before um, GoFundMe and um, and and all that. But uh, so I had uh, I was had worked on the script, and I met with a camera guy, a friend of mine, and he had worked with Howard. He had worked with Howard on a few projects, so he knew Howard, right? And the camera guy said, uh, he said, yeah, you know, I think I can get it to this guy, um, Howard Barish, you know, he makes movies. And uh, yeah, cause he, he, you know, he did some stuff with Ava uh, Duva, Duva, and the guy didn't even know who Ava DuVernay was, right? He's like, uh, it's a friend of mine, right? He's like, uh, yeah, he did some stuff with Ava, Ava Duva, I said, DuVernay? He said, yeah, yeah, that's her, that's her, that's her. <laughs> I said, really? So I got excited immediately because I was like, oh, Howard Barrett, she said stuff with Ava DuVernay. And I had already studied up on Ava, right? I knew who Ava was. And Ava at that time, I think she did, did Selma, was she doing Selma? Yeah, she was shooting Selma. And uh, yeah, she was in the middle of shooting Selma or she had shot Selma. And so I was like, yeah, 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 if you can make the introduction, please. And so he made the introduction and Howard called me and uh, we, we had, a, well, no, I sent Howard the script first, and then it took Howard a while to read it. But you learn that in this business too. People are not like people are not pressed to read your script. You're not going to give it to them. They're like, oh yeah, I want to read it over the weekend. It just doesn't happen. And so you learn to. I mean, I'm even more detached now. But back then, I was still like, has he read it yet? Has he read it yet? But I know I'm patiently like, okay, don't call him in a week. Don't call him in two weeks. Um, but then I think I called him in like maybe three weeks later, and he said, oh no, I haven't read it yet. But I'm, I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. And then uh, the next call, he called me. And he said, I read your script. And I didn't know Howard from Adam, right? Howard's a really nice guy. Like, he's really cool. He's really, like, unassuming. You wouldn't know that he has a BAFTA award or that he's been nominated for an Emmy, you know, or that he uh, produces these big CW campaign commercials. I mean, you just wouldn't know it. And so that's what I liked about him. Like, he's really, like, just low-key and assuming, unassuming. And so he just had an off-the-cuff chat. Yeah, I liked your script. He says, you know, it's, it's okay. He says, you know... Why don't you come in? We can talk. And uh, he invited me down to the office. And I came down to the office and I met with him. And uh, we just, I think we kind of just hit it off right away. Again, he's just a very unassuming, low-key kind of guy. And, uh, you know, he talked about Ava, you know, the journey of making independent films and why he was passionate about supporting younger artists, new emerging filmmakers, and how he had, uh, he was just committed to that. I mean, he just, you know, he was committed to that. He did it with Ava and... So he uh, took the film, you know, took the script, and then we started to work together at that point in terms of developing. And like I said, it took over a year to get it to where we needed it to be. And during that point, I would just rewrite it, and I would give it to him, and he would give me notes, and I'd rewrite it and give it to him, and he'd give me notes. And so we went back and forth for, you know, a few drafts until we got it to where we needed it to be. And you emailed him initially? Do you, is that right? Or yeah, I emailed him, uh, or did I call him? I think I called him. Oh. I think I called, I don't know, you know, sometimes I write the emails, but it's like, it depends. 
because I don't want to catch people off guard. You know, when you write, when you call them right away, it's like, oh, hello, who? who? <laughs> you know, they have to adjust themselves, and I don't want them to play pretend and all that stuff. So, um, but I think in Howard's case, because Brian, uh, the guy I met, set up the introduction, um, I think I called him. I think I called him. I may have emailed him. I don't know. I don't know. It could have been an email, actually. And he gave me his number and he said, let's talk. It may have been an email. Sure. It could have been. Because I like that soft intro sometimes. It gives people, they can gather themselves on the other end. You know. Well, he doesn't know if you're a solar panel salesman. So. Yeah, he doesn't know. You know, <laughs> and then, you know of course, I had, and, and, and you know, Howard took a, a big gamble, too, because, you see, in my mind, I'm thinking I'm ready. I can do a film. I know I can, right? But from the other person who's financing the film, who's going to produce it, he didn't know. Because it's not like I'd done a, I did, yeah, I did some shorts, and he saw the shorts, but it's not like I'd done a feature before. Feature's a whole other animal, we can talk about that. It's like um, a short film is a short film into itself. But a feature, in terms of shooting it, we did ours in 17 days. The actors following first act drama, second act, third act, and then arc of characters, and then um, uh, just the stamina as a director to show up every day with, with, with a game plan. It takes something, you know, and everybody, everybody, and sometimes you can fail on the job. Like, you know what I mean? Like you can be a first time director and get all set, but you better have first AD who's very clear about laying out a schedule, uh, a DP who's done this numerous times. So they've got you sort of, um, they're supporting you in making that first feature. And so the, the margin of error for you becomes less. Right? Does that make sense? Because you're a first time director, but yet you've got, you know, an AD, an experienced producer in Howard, and you've got a DP who can sort of steer the ship. But when you, when you don't have that, you know, and then you've got a first time director out there, anything can happen. So you, you, you don't know. You know, you become an unproven talent until you've done it. You know, and uh, so I knew I could do it. I felt I was very confident about that. I've been on enough sets. And uh, my experience doing the shorts and the documentary, and I had I had an acumen around film. I studied a lot of films. I had, uh, yeah. But I mean, there were, there were things surprised me on the set too. I mean, it was like, yeah, it was it was still it was still a challenging experience, you know. Like I was still figuring things out. You, you, you know what I mean? Like, I remember one day I showed up on set, and Kira Kelly was our DP. Kira Kelly now shoots uh, Queen Sugar. Uh, uh, black woman DP, I mean, really talented. And so I remember one morning, we did a shot list top to bottom, right? And so we knew exactly how we were gonna approach each scene, the movie in itself. You can kind of do that with a 16 day shoot, and you, or you better do that. You better be very specific about what you're gonna cover because you don't have a lot of, like we're not, we don't have a Spielberg set where we can play with, oh, we're gonna shoot this one scene one day, you know, or David Fincher. Yeah, let's just do this one scene one day. You know, like we got to shoot like really four or five scenes in a day. And so, um, but I showed up one morning and I said, I got an idea for this shot, right? And she looked at me. She said, yeah? And I said, yeah, why don't we start here and put it on a dolly and then move it up here as they get out of the car, right? She said, wow, that's really cool. I like that. She said, but that's not on the shot list. We didn't talk about that. I said, I know, I know, but it's cool because I got inspired, right? I got inspired that night before. I said, no, I know, but it's a cool shot. It's going to look really cool. And uh, she said, yeah, no, but we didn't talk about it. And I said, but she said, but do you want to do it? I said, yeah. She said, but it's going to take a little time because we got to put the dolly, blah, 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 blah. And I said, no, nah, but let's, let's go. Let's go for it. And they started to set up the track, right? And one dolly man, and what, and he was one dolly grip, and he was laying the track, and he was, you know, leveling the track, and then hadn't even put the dolly up there yet. And I looked at him, I said, damn, this is 10 minutes, and he hadn't even laid that track yet, and he's still trying to level it. And I'm like, 15 minutes, and I said, scrap it. Let's go back to the plan, let's go back. She said, you sure? She's a really professional DP, and what I liked about it was she's gonna give me my vision, right? So she was cooperative in that sense. You know, a lot of DPs, you know, argumentative and whatnot. I mean, not all of them, but, you know, I've heard stories, but she was very like, it's your vision, let's do it. Um, but I saw how long it was taking to put that track up. And I said, kill it, kill it, let's go back. And she said, you sure? I said, yeah. So that was an instance where, in terms of me growing as a director, knowing, especially with this budget, what you can do and what you can't do, 
right? And we could not afford, we, whether time, money, or otherwise, to lay a track down and do a dolly. And I didn't have a trained crew like that. You know, like I didn't have, I've been on other sets where uh, they have dolly grips and two or three people working the dolly. We didn't have that. You know, we had like two people in the dolly in the grip department, two people in the lighting department. Some days we spread out to three, but on bigger scenes, but we didn't have that. So I was like, you know what? So I learned my lesson. I may have cost us 15 minutes, but if I had continued on that path to do that shot, I would probably cost us about 45 minutes, really. Because then now you have to allow for the shot. One time you have to allow for the dolly. Oh, they missed the dolly mark. Then you got to allow for the pull focus. Oops. He missed his mark. So everybody got allowed for a mistake, right? And then the guy pushing it, oh, he made a mistake. So it's like, you know, it, it, it increases the, um, uh, the take value or the ratios in terms of shooting it too. So I surrendered it. But um, I say that by way of a learning lesson. You know, I learned by doing the first feature too. And imagine if she had fought you on it, you might have spent a half hour oh, yeah. trying to prove your point. Oh, yeah. So it was brilliant that she said, okay, Oh, yeah. You sure? Okay, let's. And let's then yeah. you got to see within 15 minutes that it was going to cost more time. Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. So, you know, sometimes it's just there's no getting around doing a first feature. Like, you have to do it. And, like, people think it's, I don't know if people think they can dial it in or it's easy. I don't. I, sometimes I get that impression when I talk to filmmakers, especially that filmmakers that haven't done it before. They think they can just, they're going to be great at it. But, you know, it's like anything else, you know, whether you do sound or you deep. They don't look at it like a DP. Like a DP, you know, when you shoot something, it's going to take a minute to perfect your craft. It's just going to take a minute. Lighting, you know, camera, lenses. It's a very technical thing. But being a good director can be that too, right? Sometimes people think they can just step on set and just, oh, boom, let's make it happen. But no, you know, the good directors, the really good ones, they worked at it. They worked at it. So um, I have an appreciation for directing, and I do a lot of studying on it, blocking, you know, coverage, you know, working with actors. I've taken classes, you know, in terms of directing classes. Brad Barnes does a great uh, director's working with actors class. I've taken that. Frederick Huglis, uh writing, because um, I think all directors should be able to write. I mean, it helps. It helps you to understand story, arc, where it's going. You don't become as just, you know, yeah, it just helps you become a better story technician. So, you know, I, I believe in the craft. I believe in knowing the craft. I've worked with actors a lot. And so and it becomes very helpful. Yeah. Having done many short films, when you actually started with the feature, did you think you were going to be as calm under pressure when things you're, you're having to come up with, not just a plan B, but a plan C? And then you know that there's all this money riding on it and there's all this time, yeah. you've got to make your day. Yeah. Did, did you realize how much pressure there would be having to make these decisions on the fly? Yeah, it was gradual. It was gradual because um, I heard somebody explain it to me like this. Like you could be a producer, right? And say somebody's driving you, there's a driver, and he drives you to, no, no, this is a better example. Okay, so you're going to school, right? And so your mother's driving you every day. She's driving you every day to school. You're just kind of sitting there, you're on your phone, you're talking, or you're on the email and blah, blah, blah. And you've done this route to school like a million times, right? And then one morning your mother says, okay, you drive. And all of a sudden you're like, uh, which way am I going, right? So it can be like that a little bit. You know, like I had, I'd been, even though I'd been on a million sets and I had uh, worked as a sound technician and, um, you know, I've AD'd. It's not, you know, but to be in the seat of directing, it's a whole different conversation. The decisions that are being put on you, the questions, I mean, you get a million questions a day, right? And then having to just be very clear about your shot and then being able to walk away from a scene saying, we got it, or we don't got it. We need to stay longer, right? Or how, okay, I shot this, I took more time than I needed to, I really gonna screw myself up at the end of the day. <laughs> so now I have to think about a one -er and how I can get make my day that way. So. I mean, it was it was it, it, it was very it was challenging. I mean, it was it was challenging at times. You know, I was getting that muscle up. You know, to become yeah, I was getting that muscle. I think I think I came with a lot of strong stuff. Like I work with actors a lot, and so that was sort of easy for me. You know, um, technically working with the equipment was 
it was, I had a handle on that. I think it was the scheduling and kind of knowing how long things would take, like the action sequences I did. Like I did not know it was gonna take as long as it took. And so when we did the schedule, and so I'm sitting there as the AD's doing the schedule and he's saying, yeah, this is this, is, and I'm signing off on it. You know, and I'm signing off on it basing, basing I don't really have the, exp I mean, I'm not, I haven't done the action, right? But I'm signing off on it basing, yeah, it should take that long, it should take that long. There's a difference between that and having experience doing it, right? That's why you go and do your second feature, your third feature, you're like, no, 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 I need more time. No, no, that's not gonna work. Oh yeah, I can cut that. I, yeah, we can get that in the early point and we, we're done. You know, like we did a lot of car shots, the hostess tray, I mean, one day the guy set up the hostess tray and it wasn't my fault and it wasn't, um, the AD's fault, but the guy just took forever to, do, to set up the hostess tray for the car mount shot, right? And it's because he didn't know what he was doing. He just did not know what he was doing, and it took him a long time. Or I shouldn't say, he was green. He wasn't an experienced guy. So that's the other thing when you work with independent or, or lower budgeted films. Sometimes you're not getting the cream of the crop, right? So you're getting guys that, you know, trying to break in, trying to, you know, you know, for, elevate themselves in their own careers. But this is where they are right now. So the guy just took forever. And so I was like, wow, this is killing us, man. This is killing us. And so I had to, the minute I had to just switch up and say, we can't do this. We got to go to another shot. Or he screwed, the, the, because he didn't know what he was doing or he just screwed us. Now we had to go from, I couldn't do the cross coverage I wanted. Now I had to do one coverage, right? From one side of the car. And so now, and I learned this when we were doing this, the actors, the actors already known this because they had played, um, they had been on a lot of sets. You know, you got to give credit to actors, man. I mean, credit. The really good ones, they do this a lot and they know what to do. So when they played the scene, they played to this camera. So even though I'm side angle, they played this way, right? And so I covered, the camera covered their performance in a way where they knew the blocking, right? In the car. Now, the minute I said to them, I think we have time to go to the other side, they were like, whoa, oh, we played for this camera. You switch, if now if we'd known you were going that way, look, we could have played it like this. She could have turned. We thought it was gonna be one angle. You see, I was like, ah, oh, got it, got it. So we just stuck with the one shot. Yeah, I learned that, you know what I mean? On the set that day, I was like, okay. So actors, you know, they know, you know, but I always like to inform my actors anyway, this is the blocking, this is the shot, blah, blah, blah. But the minute I said, we're gonna switch it and go another way, they were like, but we played it this way for this camera. It looks beautifully for that camera. But if they had known we were going two cameras, guess what? They've been turning like this, turning like that. Yeah. So, yeah. There's no, there's no, um, there's no getting around doing a first time feature. And I don't think, and, it, and listen, you can do a lot of preparation, but until you're on that set, until you're there the first day, um, I mean, it still becomes a first time feature experience. Yeah. Just be as prepared as you can be and surround yourself with good, people and we did that you know and Howard having done uh, this a number of times I mean I sometimes I'd get to sit in the morning I'm seeing Howard moving to Jenny I mean he's a hands-on producer too so not as that and he used to be an AD so he was an AD in Canada for a lot of years before he became a producer so uh, the last two days we lost our AD because he was sick I mean he just got I think he had some kind of food poisoning or whatever not from the set but you know he got sick and so Howard had stepped in and guess what? Both days we, we managed to wrap before schedule, like an hour early, both days. And he was so efficient and on time. And it was just like, I was like, Howard, how did I? He said, hey, man. <laughs> but he knows how to AD, you know, he knows how to run a set. And so I was blessed to have him as a producer on my first film.